Test 8. Instructions. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions. And you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all of your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the real test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1 of your booklet. Section 1 You are going to hear a conversation which happened in a travel agency. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Before we start the test, look at the example of your question booklet and listen to the tape. Hi, I would like to make a reservation for a round trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. In the tape, the man says he will fly from London to New York. Therefore, A is the correct answer. Now we will play the recording. Listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi, I would like to make a reservation for a round trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. And how about your return date? Ideally, the 31st of October. Let me check our computers to see if these dates are available. Are you looking for economy class or first class? Economy class will be just fine. We have an open flight on the 10th, but for your returning flight, the 31st of October is already fully booked. If you want to upgrade to first class, there are openings for the 31st. Just a few seats left, though. How much do I have to add for first class? First class will be around 20 to 25% more. Well, that is not worth it. I would rather just fly on another day. Do I have any other options? There are open seats back to London on the 1st of November. There are openings for first class that day too. No, I won't be able to do that because I have to work. Is there anything before the 31st? Maybe the 30th or 29th? Let me check. You can fly on the 29th, but not the 30th. Hmm, the 29th is a little bit early. Is there any way I can be on a waiting list of some sort? Of course, but you should still confirm a return date just to be safe. Okay. How about if I book a return date on the 29th and add my name to the waiting list for the 31st? Can I do that? Sure, I can do that for you. Do you also want to add your name on the waiting list for the 30th also? I would recommend this in the scenario that you do not get the flight for the 31st. That is a good idea. How much will the round trip cost? I will calculate your price for you. Your total will be £565, not including tax. Now look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 6 to 10. That's not too bad. Is there any discount for students? That is already including the discount. Without the discount, the price is easily over £600. Okay, that sounds good then. Please put me down for those dates. I will need your information. Name and student identification number, please. Kenneth Connolly, student ID 92123020. Your phone number, please. 8705 2109. 
Please tell me your mailing address. 354 Westchester Drive, London. Thank you very much, sir. How would you like to pay for the ticket? I think I will pay in cash. Well, you don't need to pay right now, just when you come to pick up the tickets. You will need to pick up the tickets at least two weeks before departure. That is no problem. One quick question. What happens if for some reason I need to cancel my trip? The student discount tickets are unfortunately non-refundable. However, if your cancellation is before 24 hours of takeoff time, then you can reschedule your flight for another day. If the cancellation is within 24 hours, then you forfeit your ticket. I understand. Well, thank you very much. I will see you next week. See you then. This is the end of Section 1. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Now turn to Section 2. Section 2. You are going to hear an orientation talk. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 11 to 15. Welcome to Orientation Week. Today I am here with the captain of our school's women's gymnastics team. Her name is Elizabeth Rain, and she is a fourth-year student. I hope you can all see her as an example of a responsible student and athlete, a role model for everyone. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you for stopping by our Orientation Week. Thank you for having me. Welcome to our university, everyone. If there are any of you thinking about joining our school's athletic program, I would strongly encourage you to do it. Being a part of the gymnastics team has been one of my best experiences during my time at this school. It has taught me so much about teamwork and friendship, and has even taught me how to improve my academics by prioritizing my time. I have some questions that I am sure the students will want to know the answers to as well. First of all, how did you find the time to do well in classes as well as train for gymnastics? Prioritizing is the key. You must be very organized. Every day I wake up and I know what I must do for the day. I plan things in order of importance. For example, if today I have a competition for gymnastics in the afternoon, then I know I have to finish my homework and studying in the morning. In other words, keeping an organized schedule of your priorities is very important. Can you explain to the students a little bit about your study habits? Well, I usually try to take classes that I'm interested in. This way, I have no excuse not to study because I chose the classes out of my own preference. I separate my study time by class. For example, if I have five classes for this semester, I will study for one class a day from Monday through Friday and then review for all of them on the weekend. I won't try and study for all five of my classes at one time. It is too hard to do that, to remember everything and not feel like you are going crazy. It is very important to focus the time that you set aside for studying. I do not study with the television on. I try to keep away from all distractions because I find that I learn better that way. But of course, how each individual will study depends on each person. Now look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 16 to 20. That sounds like good advice. Let's talk a little bit about your gymnastics career. How long have you been doing this sport for, and what has been the best moment of your college participation? 
Well, I've been participating in gymnastics since I was a kid. My parents got me involved in the sport. Hmm, the best moment. I would have to say that there is not one single instance that stands out in my mind as the best moment, but more of a whole experience. My first year in university was definitely one of the best years of my life. I met my best friends that year and really learned to grow up and be independent. Our team went to the national championships that year, and it was an incredible experience, so I would count the whole year as my best experience in college. How about the worst moment? It is true, everyone goes through bad experiences. My worst experience would have to be the fall of last year, when I broke my wrist. I was unable to participate in sports for the remainder of the year and had to learn how to write with my left hand. I guess when I look back at it, though, even though I wouldn't wish this to happen to anyone, this experience definitely made me stronger as a person. It taught me to look at life with a new perspective and to really value the friends and family that are important and close to me. Thanks for your time, Elizabeth. Do you have anything else you want to tell the new students? Just have a good time. Don't stress out too much, but be responsible for your actions. Work hard and play hard. That's my motto for life. This is the end of Section 2. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You are going to hear a conversation between a student and a tutor. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi Brad. I was wondering if you have time to answer some of my questions about my upcoming test. Sure, no problem Jeff. What is it that you're having problems on? Well, it's for my English final. We have to prepare a five-minute speech to present in front of the whole class, including the professor. So I'm a little bit worried. Is there any specific topic or can you do it on whatever you want? It has to have something to do with the origins of English literature. I'm thinking of doing it on Shakespeare, but I bet many other students will have the same idea. That's fine. Don't worry if others are doing the same thing. As long as you do a good job, that's all that counts. A good professor will grade all students fairly. You really think so? I suppose Shakespeare is the most famous author, so it should be fine. Besides, Shakespeare has so many works. You only have to choose a couple of them and talk about those. I guess you're right. Do you have any advice about how to prepare a speech? First, you need to select your topic. Have you done this yet? Yes, I have lots of information on Shakespeare. Good. Next, you should do a research on a specific topic. Do you have a deadline for which to turn in your speech topic? The deadline is next Tuesday. So you should have a detailed outline of what you will say by then. Do not just turn in a piece of paper saying Shakespeare on it. That will not give your professor any idea as to what you will be talking about. OK. So you think I should write out an outline of my speech? Of course! Writing your speech out in outline form is essential. No one could give a speech from scratch. Even the president must refer to his outline when giving a speech. An outline will give you a good structure to base your speech on. Now look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen to the tape 
and answer questions 26 to 30. That's true. I was thinking that I would do an outline last, after I figured everything out. But I think your idea is better. What should I do after I have an outline prepared? You should then write the speech out, word for word, what you're going to say. This is so you'll have a firm idea of what you will say. It doesn't mean that the speech you will give will be exactly the same, but at least you have a fairly good idea what the final product will be. At this point, I can read it over for you if you want. Really? That would be great. I would appreciate that so much. No problem. Once you write it out, the next step is to practice giving the speech. At first, you can do it in front of the mirror, so you can see your expressions in your presentation. After that, you should practice giving your speech to some friends. I can listen to it for you too. That's a great idea. I really owe you a big favour then. Sure, you can do my Latin homework for me. Just kidding. Seriously, don't worry about it. I can help you with anything you need. So when is the speech due? Well, the speech topic is due next Tuesday. The speech itself will be due next Friday. I can help you any time you want because I have no tests this next week. Besides, I'm an English major and Shakespeare is one of my favourite authors, so helping you out will be no big deal. Thanks so much. Well, I'm going to the library to get started on all this. I'll call you tomorrow. See you tomorrow then. This is the end of section 3. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You are going to hear a lecture. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 31 to 40. I'd like to introduce Rebecca Bramwell, an artist and illustrator who has come along today to talk to you all about getting your first job or commission as an artist. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you for inviting me. I remember when I graduated back in 1983, I was very excited about getting my first commission. My degree was in fine art, and I'd worked long and hard to get it. I was an enthusiastic student and I never found it difficult to find the incentive to paint. I think as a student you're pushed along by fellow students and tutors and the driving force is there. However, when you leave college you find yourself saying things like I'll have one more cup of coffee and then I'll sit down to work. I hate to admit it, but I say it myself. Suddenly, it isn't finding the inspiration or getting the right paper that's a problem. It's you. In my view, there are a number of reasons why this happens. It's a real challenge making a decent living as a new artist. You have to find a market for your work. Often you work freelance and need to take samples or portfolios of your work from place to place. These experiences are common to a lot of professional people. But artists also have to bear their souls to the world in a way. More than anything, they want praise. If people don't like what they create, then it can be a very emotional and upsetting experience hearing them say this. I began to realise that these problems were preventing me from having a career in art, and so I decided to experiment. I was a painter, but I started to dabble in illustration, drawing pictures for books, cards. 
and this offered me the opportunity to become more emotionally detached from my work. I was no longer producing images from the heart, but developing images for a specified subject, taking a more practical approach. I began to develop a collection of my illustrations which I put into a portfolio and started to carry around with me to show prospective clients and employers. But it was still tricky because publishers, for example, want to know that your drawings will reproduce well in a book. But without having had any work published, it's hard to prove this. Having a wonderful portfolio or collection of original artwork is, of course, a first step. But what most potential clients would like to see is printed artwork. And without this evidence, they tend to hold back still when it comes to offering a contract. Well, I overcame this problem in two ways. And I suppose this is my advice to you on preparing your portfolio of your best work. The first way was by submitting my work for a competition. The one I chose was for a horoscope design and was sponsored by a top women's magazine. There are a few of these competitions each year and they offer new illustrators an opportunity to showcase their work. The other approach I took was to design and print some mock-up pages of a book. In other words, I placed some of my illustrations next to some text in order to demonstrate how my work would look when it was printed. Perhaps I was lucky in that I had taken a degree that provided me with all-round creative skills so that I could vary my style and wasn't limited to a certain technique. I think that is important. The art world and many other creative fields do try to pigeonhole people into snug boxes with an accompanying label. I think you should try to resist this if you feel it happening to you. If you don't, you'll find it difficult to have new work accepted if you try to develop your style at a later stage in your career. Nevertheless, when you start out, and particularly when you're going for an interview, it's important not to confuse people by having a lot of different examples in your portfolio. One remedy for this is to separate your work into distinct categories. In my case, I did this by dividing my design-inspired illustrations from my paintings. It is then easier to analyse the market suited to each portfolio, such as magazines, book jackets, CD covers, etc. Working under two names is also useful, as it clarifies the different approaches and offers a distinction between them. I think it's been hard for artists to be recognised in anything other than the pigeonholes that they have been placed in. Luckily, these barriers are slowly being demolished. This is the end of Section 4. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Please subscribe to my Pilot Tips channel.